Now, hopefully you noticed that uh, when I created both of these secondary zones on the second server that, uh, well, we didn't exactly get the result that may have been expected. In both cases, you can see that the zone hasn't been loaded by this DNS server because, well, for some reason, it's unable to contact the master server. The same holds true over here for company.pri. Well, gosh, why am I not actually getting this zone information? This is actually done on purpose because back in the earliest days of DNS, there were ways in which you could just simply extract out the entire contents of a DNS zone. And so DNS very quickly realized that there needed to be a way to lock down the sheer content of the zone so that not every human being in the world could get every IP address in the world. That's potentially a security problem. So up here in our original primary zone, here for company.pri, one of the things we have to do is configure the zone transfer settings to allow these secondary zones to receive the content. This happens over here under the zone transfers tab. And if you'll notice by default, the default setting allows for zone transfers, which is a fancy way of saying you are allowed to request and then receive the entire contents of this zone but only to those servers that happen to be listed on the name servers tab. You could make things easy on yourself and then allow zone transfers to any server. However, this is a really bad thing to do from a security perspective. Or you could go over here and allow to the following servers if you had other servers that for some reason or another were not name servers here in DNS. This middle section here is perhaps the best practice because what it does is it forces only authoritative name servers to actually receive contents of the zone. It also makes things much more easy to, to manage over time, because generally once you set these, you probably don't find yourself back in the DNS console looking at this information very often. It, it could be years before you come back in here to make some minor changes again. So over here under the name servers tab is where we need to go about defining who are the official name servers for this zone. Right now, it's only dc.company.pri that's resolved to 192.168.0.100. We need to then add in an additional server, which would be dc2.company.pri, which corresponds to, as you can see here, 192.168.0.101. I would be aware in certain circumstances, this resolution sometimes just doesn't work. You can see here we've got a little error message that says the server with this IP address is currently not responding or not authoritative. So don't worry about the fact that you've entered this in here into this location. Let's choose the OK button here to add in dc2.company.pri as another name server for the zone. Once I've done that, let me hit the OK button here and I'll go back down here to our reverse lookup zones and make the same configuration here under the name servers tab for dc2.company.pri. So dc2.company.pri. Choose to resolve, hit the OK button, hit OK again. And now after a second or two, we should be able to come down here to our secondaries and see if they can access the zone and download the zone content. Let's see if we can do a transfer of that zone data. I hit F5. As you can see now, we actually have all the content here for the zone data. And back over here, if I hit F5 again, yep, there's all the content for that zone data as well. So if you've ever been confused about some of the error messages you see here in DNS Manager, you've got to make sure that you give the appropriate permissions for these secondary machines to be able to transfer that zone data and its contents.